Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you to everyone at Riverton Middle School for letting us visit your classroom. My name is Anka Kamrath, and I head the computational laboratory at NCAR, which runs our supercomputers. And I'd like to introduce you to some of the folks you see here on, on the screen. Um, one who is about to join us, his schedule is always very jammed up, is Dr. Everett Joseph, who is my boss and the director of NCAR, the National Center for Atmospheric Research. Um, Mr. Alahi, Irfan Alahi, he is the director of high performance computing at NCAR. And Dr. A.J. Lauer, she is our outreach and education program lead in our computational lab. And finally, Ms. Summer Watson, who works at the Supercomputing Center in Cheyenne, Wyoming, where the supercomputing, supercomputer is being built. We want to welcome you all to our video call this morning, and we have a few things to talk to you about. As you know, we recently held a contest to name our newest supercomputer. But before we talk about the contest, I will pass the mic to Dr. A.J. Lauer, who will tell us more about what a supercomputer is and how our scientists use it. Thank you. AJ, it's all yours. Thanks for the introduction, Anka. Hi, everyone. Let's talk a little bit about what a supercomputer is and why we're so excited that one of your classmates came up with the perfect name for our next machine. A supercomputer is made up of many smaller computers that all work together to do giant math problems. At NCAR, our scientists use these huge computers to calculate things like weather patterns, climate change, or the ways that fire might behave in certain conditions. These are extremely complicated problems that are influenced by things like wind, temperature, humidity, or location on the earth, or all of those things at the same time. Our supercomputers live at the NCAR Wyoming Supercomputing Center just outside Cheyenne, Wyoming. That's why we wanted to let you all get a chance at naming our next machine. What cooler thing than to have a Wyoming kid pick the name for a computer that is right here in your home state? The computer that you're looking at on the screen right now is our current supercomputer, which is named Cheyenne. There isn't anyone standing in there in this photo, so it's a little hard to tell, but those cabinets are almost seven feet tall. Cheyenne is the 42nd supercomputer at NCAR. Our first supercomputer was the size of a whole room but was much slower than your cell phone is today. Cheyenne is much faster. You would need 21,600 iPhone 7s to keep up with Cheyenne. It is made of 145,152 processing cores. A normal laptop, like the one that I'm talking to you from, only has six cores. All those cores work together to create what we call a 5.3 petaflop machine. That means that Cheyenne can do 5.3 quadrillion math problems per second. Our new machine will be able to do 19.4 quadrillion math problems per second. Think about how fast you could do your next math test if you had a supercomputer to help you with it. Scientists from universities across the country and here at NCAR use all that math power to help them solve huge problems like predicting how much rain or snow we will get in a season, healing our coral reefs, or helping to prevent damage from things like solar flares. We even use our supercomputer to do daily weather predictions for Antarctica. All those scientists and penguins down in Antarctica rely on Cheyenne to let them know if they're going to have a snowstorm or a warm day headed their way. I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Irfan Alahi, who helps build supercomputers. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lauer. The new supercomputer, Derecho, will allow our scientists and researchers to run models that simulate the complex processes that happen on Earth, like thunderstorm, flood, or even when baby sea turtles end up in the ocean after they hatch. The new machine will use all those math problems to help us understand how the weather or climate might unfold in the future. Scientists, and also science, future scientists, just like some of you, will be able to harness the increased computing power of the new, new supercomputer, Gerecho, to run multiple experiments at one, once. 
uh, we will be able to understand how things like water availability, flooding, wildfires, and air quality all work together to create weather conditions like thunderstorms, tornadoes, or hurricanes. Or even we can learn about how water temperature or weather pattern impact these uh, the baby sea turtles. Coral reefs are important food and energy sources that we all depend on. We are so excited to see what our scientists come up with to study with this new supercomputer derecho. Thank you. So We're so happy that our supercomputers are located in the beautiful state of Wyoming because that means we get to work with smart students like you and it means that our scientists can study pro problems that you all care about. And so I would like to introduce you to our director, Dr. Everett Joseph. It looks like he made it into the meeting who is himself an atmospheric scientist and who leads all of us at NCAR. Dr. Joseph, I believe you have something exciting to share with the students from Riverton. Absolutely. Um, thank you, Dr. Lara. Uh, and it's really, uh, and again, my name is Everett Joseph and I'm the director of the National Center for Atmospheric Research, NCAR. And uh, it's really a pleasure, a great pleasure and honor for me um, to join uh, with you today to announce the name of our new computer. And as Dr. Lara uh, pointed out, uh, I am to myself an atmospheric science, scientist and I've spent um, uh, many, many hours uh, running experiments on supercomputers. So uh, being involved in uh, the naming is a really big deal and privilege um, for me today. Um, and we've been looking forward to this for months and uh, we are absolutely thrilled that you, um, we've, we've had your help in uh, this naming. So um, I am not going to talk too much here and put off um, the, um, the most important event for today. And um, so now, um, now the moment that we've been waiting for and I am excited to announce the name of our next supercomputer and importantly, not just the name, but the student who sent us the winning name. That's an important part of the announcement. Um, I, I, think there should, I think there should be some drum roll or something. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, the, winning, the, winning, the winning name and the name of um, our new supercomputer is Duratio. Uh, and uh, I wanna thank Kale. I'm gonna mess up your last name, Kale, but it's Arborgast for submitting the win winning name. And uh, we uh, here at NCAR are so grateful for this uh, amazing uh, new um, name for our new supercomputer. Uh, when it was shared with me, um, uh, my reaction was, yes, that's exact, that's that's a great name. So instantly I recognized, rec recognized it was a great name. Uh, Duratio will be, the name Duratio, will be in thousands of uh, scientific papers and speeches and posters and much, much more for years to come. It'll literally go down in, um, in history. Uh, it, within the scientific community, it'll be something like Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Within our community, it'll be so, that name will be so important. Um, and um, more importantly, the computer itself, the computer to ratio, as I think was uh, been discussed this morning, uh, will really be instrumental in helping us solve some of the great challenges that we have, environmental challenges that are facing um, our society today in uh, extreme weather and climate change um, and um, help us understand those challenges and how we, um, we help society deal with those challenges in um, the future. So I'm gonna stop here and uh, see if Kel wants to tell us how um, he came up with the name and anything else um, he would like to say. So I'll stop. All right, this is Kale Arbogast. He's a little taller than me. Hi. <laughs> hey, Kale. So, when I was thinking of names for the supercomputer, I was thinking of something that would, you know, fit the computer and what, you guys were thinking it was going to do. And so I was just going around Google and I was like, wow, the ratio is a fast moving storm that brings lots of dust and debris and a bunch of things across 
many states in different continents and countries. And I was like, well, the supercomputer is gonna to have to move information around the world. And I thought that that'd be a good name because it's just gotta move everything around so everyone can use it and move different information from different parts of countries and states. So that's how I came up with the name. Thank you. That's, that's great. Uh, awesome. Uh, uh, great um, example of the name. Um, it, it really fits in terms of um, the phenomena itself. And it's just a great sounding name as well. Um, so thank you, Kale. We love the name Duratio, Duratio a lot. Um, and um, we hope that uh, you're able to join us um, when it's fully built next year. And um, we get back into the facility and, and um, you know, hopefully we move beyond. We're, we're, we're all back together again and um, we're not social distancing. Uh, and so what I'd like to do now is that we have a short uh, video from the Wyoming Superintendent of Public Instruction, Jillian Bailo, congr congratulating you and your school on such a huge accomplishment. And I just wanna say thank you again. Um, really, this is really exciting. Hi, I'm Jillian Bailo, Wyoming State Superintendent, and it's such an honor to congratulate Kale, a middle school student from Riverton who won the contest and named Wyoming and the world's newest supercomputer, Derecho. What a cool name. University of Wyoming, congratulations to you as well. It is no small feat to create a fleet of supercomputers. And in addition to NCAR and now Derecho, I'm sure you're already thinking about what's next. But that takes more than hard work and great ideas. You have the credibility with the National Science Foundation and many others to get the funding and the support needed to bring projects like Derecho and NCAR to life. Thank you for your keen expertise. I'm so proud of Wyoming. In our schools, kindergarten through 12, all students have access to computer science courses now. And Kale, while you and your other classmates who entered the contest may not think of that as STEM education, by all means, you're engaged in a STEM education every day in school. Keep it up. You have a bright future ahead of you. University of Wyoming, thank you again for making this opportunity possible, not just for Wyoming, not for the world, but for K-12 students across the state who got to take part in this contest. Congratulations, Kale. So thank you all for joining us today. I apologize for my slight uh, technical difficulty there. Um, Dr. Jeff Everett Joseph, uh, Mr. Elahi, Ms. Camreth, and Dr. Lauer, thank you for your time today. Um, again, my name is Summer and I'm at the Supercomputer Center here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And so I wanted to just offer, if the students have any questions about our center in Cheyenne, I'm glad to stay on for about five minutes and just answer any questions you might have. They're kind of stunned and shocked in silence right now. That's but. all right, that's understandable. <laughs> Why don't I give you a, a, a quick view at, at our facility? Um, show of hands in your room, how many students have been to the supercomputing center in Cheyenne? Well, then you all have to come down when we're able to do that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start a screen share. And you saw a little bit of the facility when we were talking about it earlier. So this is the outside of our facility. And inside we do have a visitor center. Um, Dr. Bailo talked about, uh, you know, STEM activities and how you are involved in those types of things. Um, our visitor center focuses a lot on uh, the atmospheric sciences and it explains a lot about what our scientists do. Um, it also explains supercomputing. Uh, which is parallel processing. And so our visitor center is located right inside our building here at Cheyenne, Wyoming. You can come into the uh, 
visitor center and take a look in the data center window where you can see Cheyenne and the new supercomputer. Uh, we'll have obviously some display here as well for that. So any questions so far? Do you guys remember um, AJ had mentioned our current supercomputer Cheyenne is 5.3 petaflops, right? 5.3 quadrillion math calculations per second. Our new one will be 19. Irfan, can you correct me on that? 19.6? Yeah, it will be just uh, over 19, uh, not uh, 19.6, uh, just close to 19.1 or 19.15, something close to that. Okay. So I have a question. Yes. What do you do with the supercomputer? Like when you make a new one, what do you do with the older ones? You take them apart or? So actually in that last scene, um, we do have in this last scene, Yellowstone, which was our last supercomputer. And just so you guys know, a supercomputer lasts about five years. Um, we run them so hard and, and they're at such a high level of processing that they start to have some wear and tear. Um, so. Yellowstone was our last supercomputer and because it's acquired with government funding through the National Science Foundation, who is our, our main sponsor, um, they do need to go to auction. And so uh, I believe part of Yellowstone went to Stanford University. So uh, they, they are continued to be used after they've served their purpose here, but probably in a, a little bit of a different capacity. I think we also, we're about to redo our exhibit center and we're going to have some pieces of old machines that you all can look at really closely and actually like poke at and play with wires and stuff. So um, we do keep little pieces of some of them around so that just for posterity and so that we can look at how things have changed through the years. So as AJ mentioned in her introduction, these cabinets are quite tall. They're, they're over seven feet tall. And we do have one of the cabinets from Yellowstone and again, we will be redoing our visitor center, but we plan to put that cabinet in the visitor center for you to view. And the unique thing about Yellowstone is that it was water cooled. So the back of the cabinet door had kind of um, like coiling that you would find in a refrigerator and it would help run cool water through the supercomputer cabinet, which would then absorb some of the heat away from that. So yeah, you'll be able to see some of those things in the visitor center and Cheyenne, is also water cooled. Um, each uh, motherboard has the processor on it in each of those blades and the water runs straight to the processor chip as you can see in this picture here. So some really neat things to see at the facility. Uh, if you have not been down, um, obviously we're not open at this time, but our our website will announce when we are able to take visitors in the visitor center again. But we appreciate all of your time. Kale, thank you so much for your thoughtful uh, name submission. And we think that, uh, that this will be very exciting. So this virtual tour I was showing you today will be available in the next couple of months. And we hope to continue to build that out with uh, the new information about derecho as well. All right. Thank you guys for your time today and congratulations. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shayla. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you.